you have a multi-billion dollar porn industry and OnlyFans industry now. Um, you have the prostitutes, the jump downs, the mistresses, the sugar babies, the sugar daddies, the zaddies, the, we can go on and on and on about the stuff that's well known in society that sadly is more accepted than another form of marriage. Matter of fact, an ancient form of marriage. Slow Lakeum, peace. I'm Coach Navir. And I am Coach Nyla. I am one of his wives. We are two of the three founders of Outstanding Personal Relationships, as well as two of the three authors of the book, Let's, Let's Talk, Talk Polygamy, Polygamy Uncensored. Uncensored. With that being said, we want to continue with our series called The Polygamy Process, because that's the question that we really get asked more than anything else. You know, how do you do it? What does it take? All this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. because there are so many different variables and differing dynamics yeah, in polygyny than what we're traditionally used to with monogamy, despite how different relationships may be <laughs> today and things that are legalized and stuff like that. So we're gonna address some more issues, especially coming from an incoming wife's perspective. Throw to Coach Nyla. Okay, of course I'm going to discuss a number of issues, challenges, or part of the process, if you will, when it comes to incoming or additional wives, uh, because um, I'm an incoming wife or additional wife, if you will. So certain things I actually know from experience, but a lot of these um, questions or topics came from those of um, those of you <laughs> who have written to us and asked us some things and thought it was pretty good to do a video on this part of the process. It's not being spoken about as much. Right. Well, we're opening up the conversation. That's one of the things that we are grateful uh, to do. We've been opening up the conversation for the last several years now, and we notice how the tide has really shifted when it comes to openness of conversations mm -hmm. and as well as other people other than, let's say, an initial wife, her concerns will trump all, including the husbands mm -hmm. or even when it comes to children, everything like that. So, yeah, we, we're definitely grateful for that. Yes. So, so let's go. You are right. So, OK, one of the things <laughs> that we get is the signing up for polygyny as an um, incoming or additional wife, if you will, signing up for polygyny. OK, so I'm looking at these notes because I want to make sure that I stay on track and stay on topic because I tend to veer off sometimes. However, um, no, she doesn't. Never, <laughs> never. So uh, signing up for polygyny, but not knowing the nuances um, because they can differ from family to family, from situation to situation. OK, so I've gotten this a number of times where people will say, well, what did you expect? You signed up for this, you know, and I. Put it in the comments if you are one who have said it or if you are an additional wife that has gotten that, that information too. Has heard it. Has heard it. There it is. Um, that, you know, you signed up for this. Now, here's the thing, though. Yes, we as additional wives do sign up for polygyny because we know that <laughs> our husband is already married. We know that he's, you know, he's a polygynous man by nature and that he's practicing polygyny or he will be if he, mar you know, marrying us type of thing. So, yes, you sign up for polygyny, but does polygyny entail you um, being discarded, if you will, if that's the case? Um, in some cases, that's ha that has happened um, to a number of women. Um, does it mean that you have to tiptoe around other people's feelings and not, you know, care about your own? Those different things like that. People will say, well, you know what that looks like. Why would you expect your um, co-wife to be happy with you or to be happy with the situation um, because you are marrying her husband or you're taking her man or these type of things like that? And there are a number of instances where there are initial wives that does not, that don't think like that, that don't have that issue. So that's why I said it. So being happy though, has that really been a thing? Cause I haven't no, no, really no. heard that part. Like, oh, why are you surprised she's not happy with you? 
Yeah. That's different. No, I've heard like, that. Well, she's happy not, with you? Like, that she's not happy with the situation. Why are you not surprised that she's not happy with the situation? Why would she be happy with it, though? I mean, that would be surprising to me, though. Too. Yeah, no one said that the person would be happy. So that's the interesting thing that you get that um, on the other end where people where people will ask you, why didn't you expect, why would you expect her to be happy? No one expected the person to be happy with the situation. It's just that those are, what's the word I'm looking for when you, projections that, you know, we would get that we expected this to be all hunky-dory, peaches and cream, sunshine and rainbows, kittens and unicorns and things like that. But that's not the case. It's like, you know, there are going to be some challenges, but no, you didn't sign up for a person to shun you, for a person to um, not speak to you or, you know, push you to the side or threaten the husband to leave, you know, that they're going to leave. You don't right. sign up for those things. So, no, you're not expecting her to throw you a party and, you know, have some, you know, you know, invite you over for tea or whatever the case may be, but you know, you don't expect those other things. You don't sign up for that. So that was the thing. So not the um, the happiness part of it, but just you don't sign up for the other stuff that the usually drama. come. The drama. That's it. So yeah. <laughs> you have anything? Yeah, yeah. There's the there's the traditional um, stereotypes that go on that are well accepted in society, but we live in a society where people falsely equate monogamy to meaning, well, this person is just faithful to one person. Mm -hmm. Yet, you have a multi-billion dollar porn industry and OnlyFans industry now. Um, you have the prostitutes, the jump downs, the mistresses, the sugar babies, the sugar daddies, the zaddies, the, we can go on and on and on about the stuff mm -hmm. that's well known in society that sadly is more accepted than another form of marriage. Matter of fact, in mm -hmm. ancient, form of marriage. So then that tag that is already shunned, already something that's out there gets put on something that's moral. That's a whole different thing. You know what I'm saying? So those are other stress. Oh, now this is a home record or this is a blah, blah, blah. Right. This is another form of marriage. Yes. Marriage, taking care of, building a family with, having children. This is polygyny. That's real stuff. The other stuff you're talking about, that's the stuff that your mom, your daddy, your uncle, them, and grandpa, what have you, and right. people on your same block that you live in are, are probably participating in. Mm -hmm. All right, let's be real. Because the fact of the matter is, most people don't go to um, therapists and marriage counselors because of polygyny. No, mm -hmm. it's, it's because of something's going on in monogamy. That's the interesting thing, too. I think that because of the misconception, because people will say, um, put it on the lines of what they say, legalized cheating and all this mm -hmm. other crazy stuff like that. I think because of that um, mentality and ignorance or lack of knowledge or not wanting to see it for being a form of marriage because it's not as traditional, if you will, as monogamy as Well, right I mean, now. there's other reasons. There's the loss of love, loss of attention and affection. That is a fear that drives this type of stigma. So I get it. It's one just extra immature and is massively disrespectful when you are talking about a form of marriage, something that's yeah. pro morals, and you're throwing these labels on it. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. you're also championing the slut shaming. Right. Don't slut shame. Like, what? Right. You can't have both ways. What is this? That's the interesting thing, too, that you said the loss of love and the, <laughs> the stuff, the things that you were saying, which I get and I understand that. And we understand that even as you know, additional wives understand that. This is the part that um, sometimes become a shocker to people is that additional wives have that fear of loss of love too, <laughs> even though they signed up for polygyny because polygyny in our minds, or at least mine, it wasn't that something was being taken away. Of course, that's it's easy to say that as an additional wife, as an incoming wife, you're like, okay, Nothing is being taken away, it's being added, this and that and the other. However, it's some misconceptions that go with that because people would think that, well, because you're adding or you're you're gaining a husband, that the other things that you would that become, I guess, not so much as deal breakers anymore is not because the husband checked the boxes, you know, and being married was not one that was a deal breaker. So you never got to have the time with him by yourself. You know, you mm -hmm. always had to share this time, um, but you already put that in your head, but that doesn't mean that doesn't affect you from time to time. However, you have to weigh, you know, you have to weigh how big that is compared to well, the, 
the you know, that also goes into the part of the ex the comparison mm -hmm. because many also feel that they can't catch up to the time that he mm -hmm. may have already been there, whether that's five years, 15 years, 20 years or whatever, is they had that feeling that I can never catch up because we may not have, <laughs> well, if the other, you know, wife already has children, I'm not going to pop out three, four children like that right. or five or six, you know, whatever. <laughs> so they gauge you by other things. So with the children or the time, these are other stressors and things that are unique, of course, to um, an incoming wife. Yep. I know that because I felt that too. <laughs> and I've heard that, you know, where it's like, oh, well, she has this many children and you only have this many children. Like, I'm not trying to <laughs> have that. I mean, now, I'm not. Because before, before I had my, my mental in my head of how many children I wanted all together. And it was much more than I have right now. <laughs> and that, that quickly changed because, you know, kids are a handful. So... <laughs> <laughs> besides that. But no, like you said, the comparison, that is a, a huge thing. Um, and the, that's part of the process too. And it's an ongoing pro Here's the thing, when it comes to the ups and downs of polygyny, it's an ongoing process. It's an ongoing process with the initial wife. It's an ongoing process with the uh, any additional wife or wives, um, with children, with you know family members, with whatever. Because um, I can go into even the whole discussion of being married to a married man with my family <laughs> or, or whether it was my grandma or my cousins or my mom, it's so many different things. And sometimes it's like the parents just don't understand <laughs> that type of thing where you'll get this slight shade for a while until they realize that, you know, they have to either not deal with it. And that means that they go about their business or if they want to be in your life, they're going to have to deal with it type of thing. Know. So, yeah, because even you'll get the comparison over there. Um, I've gotten comparison before. It was like, oh, do you think that, you know, he married you only because you were a lot like his, you know, first wife or that you, you know, were younger. First, uh, honey, I am not that much younger. <laughs> you know, so when people think that, it's like that's your perception of things, you mm -hmm. know, and not what it really is. But sometimes those perceptions can eat at you, can eat away at you if you're not doing the things like getting into personal development, um, having the conversation, because um, it was a minute <laughs> before I was able to tell you how I really felt about certain things, because I'm like, okay, is my feelings going to matter? Um, is it, you know, is he going to take her side, you know, my co-wife's side, you know? Um, As a side note, fellas, look, <laughs> part of the, that whole process on the man's side is that you're going to deal with stuff <clears throat> like she's talking about. She's taking her side and taking her side. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. If you have two wives and both of them think that you're taking the other person's side, you're then you're probably so right. right in the middle. <laughs> probably being fair as ever because yes. she's going to think you're taking her side. She's going to think you're taking her side. Neither one of them know that they're saying that. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? You're going to have to be able to adjust to different personalities, adjust to different arguments, adjust, mm -hmm. adjust to the imaginations and hallucinations mm -hmm. and comparison and all that stuff, but do that by being able to communicate, letting them feel heard, and establishing your leadership and boundaries right away, you know, or as soon as possible. Yes. That's very important. So, because you're going to have to deal with that. It's like you want to focus on building and growing, moving forward, yep. getting stuff handled, making sure money is right. Family. You're trying to make sure stuff is really big, and then you have to, you know, come back and deal with stuff like that, which to many of us, it may seem trivial. And in the big picture of things, it really is. But... You, as the leader, as the one that people look up to and the one that was supposed to lead the fam, that lies on your shoulder as well. So, yeah. Yes. Just and women, <laughs> we do have to understand that because it can be petty. Be real. I'm going to tell you. No. No. I didn't say that. <laughs> hey, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what he was thinking. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm going to tell you. It's petty. It's petty. And we have to understand that everybody has... Um, you know, their own thing that they're going through and polygyny. Um, the husbands have a lot on their shoulders when it comes to managing, um, whether it's multiple households, multiple emotions, multiple, you know, and there's children involved too. So you have those things too when there are children involved. Um, and most likely more than not, there are, that you know, there are. So um, you got that. 
But then we're so focused on what we are feeling and what we're going through that we kind of shut out what other people are going through. So one of the things, part of the process is understanding that a couple things. One, you're one big family is what it is. I know some people don't want to hear that. Oh, no, we're not a family. She's just married to my husband or, you know, he's just married to another person. We're one big family. I always say that we're one family under the umbrella of our husband because he is the leader. He is the head of the family. And anybody that he brings in, whether he marries someone else or it's another child or children, you know, some children are born. These are additions to the family. So when we think about that, thinking about the process, that is going to be a process. It's going to be some ups and downs. It's going to be some highs and lows, but being intentional about wanting your family to win and understanding that you're going to have some certain feelings, whether it's insecurities, because yes, wives all together have the insecurities. Um, incoming wives, additional wives, as well as initial wives. We have our insecurities. It may, they may be different in different moments and different times, but they're still there. But being able to recognize it and ask yourself questions on, is it true? Is it real? Can you communicate with your husband about these different things and being able to be able to effectively communicate with your husband with these things? If he is the person that you marry because you trusted that he can lead the family, that he is going to um, be able to be wise with the, the growth of the family and he's caring and all these other things, he has the care and concern, then why would it be an issue for you to tell him or talk to him about your feelings? I'm saying this I'm saying this as a person who had to deal with that, who had to ask myself these questions like, why, if I married this man knowing that he's a good leader, knowing that he's a great father, knowing that he's a great husband, there's these qualities and these characteristics, how, am, what, what is stopping me from telling him the issues that I'm having, the challenges that I'm having? It was me putting these other things out there, you know, comparisons or, you know, feeling this way. So when I was able to open up, it made the process a whole lot easier because then he don't have to figure out <laughs> what is going on, you know, with me or anything like that. It actually makes the process easier. I'm not saying it makes it easy, you know, or like the best ever, but it makes it easier because you can connect with one another and build in your way. You don't have to compare yourself to the other marriage. Indeed, I mean, that's one of the uh, videos I recently recorded dealing with connection. Uh, the three C's of connection. So, of course, it's communication, clarity, and comprehension, mm -hmm. which is very important because she can feel however she wants to feel. Everybody can feel however they want to feel, all right? But understanding that process and how it gets there matters and being able to address it in a problem-solving way so it can be something productive moving forward right. versus just venting and complaining or being petty and so on and so forth. So, yeah, prayerfully, you got some good stuff. So far, again, this is an entire... <laughs> process of the process, but the process is the process, right. right? So we're gonna have it as a series to really address a number of different things. If you want us to address some things, um, feel free to comment below. So since you made it this far in the video, we know that you support us and what we're doing, we wanna shout you out. Um, so what should they put below? Continue the process. <laughs> so, yeah. Indeed, continue the process. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or whatnot, feel free to go ahead, post it here, or see us in our private community. And if you don't have a book, make sure you get it. Let's talk polygamy.com. With that being said, make sure you are growing intentionally, loving fearlessly, and connected <laughs> on a higher level every, every single, single day. day. All right, slow Peace.